Hare Krishna. My name is Ujwala Rasatnya Devi Dasi, and I will be presenting uh, Katha. I'll be speaking Katha on uh, Atma Kandana. So we'll get to the PowerPoint and then uh, we'll take it from there. So Atma Kandana, this is a beautiful topic. Very beautiful topic, the essence of bhakti. Let me share the PowerPoint, please. Hope no, I'm sharing it. Yeah. So, Atma Kandana. Recording. Stop recording. Hare Krishna. My name is Ujwala Rasatna Dasi, and uh, I will be presenting uh, on the topic Atma Krandana. So we'll be going to the PowerPoint and then we'll take it from there. So this topic, Atma Kandana, is a very beautiful one. This is uh, the essence of bhakti, Shuddha bhakti. So that's the topic for us today. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtha Hari Kutale Ki Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinam. Namaste Saraswata Devim Gauravani Pachai Mandir Visesha Sankar. So the topic is longing for the Lord in the heart. And in the language of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu, this is called as Atma Krandana. Krandana, yearning. Atma of soul, the yearning of the soul, longing for the Lord. So that's the Lord in the heart, Vasudeva. Krishna. And um, before we go to the examples of different uh, personalities who had longing of this heart in Srimad Bhagavatam. Let's see what this Atma Kandana is. It can be defined in many ways. Um, according to Srimad Bhagavatam, Savai Pumsan Paro Dharma Yatho Bhakti Radokshaje Ahaituki Aprati Hata Yatma Suprasidati. So that kind of attraction or yearning of the soul um, for the super soul, that kind of attraction of the soul to the super soul, which is ahaituki, where there is no cause, no reasoning. Apratihata, where, where there is no um, stopping, where there is no interruption. And yayatma uh, suprasidati. So this kind of longing of the soul for the super soul, which is, which has no cause and which is uninterrupted and that can call, give complete satisfaction to the soul. That is Shuddha Bhakti. That is Atma Krandana. So that's one kind of a, a definition for Atma Krandana, the yearning of the soul for the super soul. And who has this kind of deep yearning for the soul? All the Shuddha Bhaktas. Their way of bhakti is Atma Kandana. Their way of bhakti is by Sharanagati. So all the Sharanagata Bhaktas, they practiced bhakti, bhakti through Atma Kandana. So all the Sharanagata Bhaktas had this Atma Kandana. Any sincere soul has this Atma Kandana to at least some extent. But in Shuddha Bhaktas, uh, they are they are just that way their way of bhakti is um, sharanagati they are, are in full sharanagati so and are there some examples in Srimad Bhagavatam that we could discuss today yes we have some today and uh, we will be discussing about uh, um, 
we will be hearing about uh, King Rishabhadeva and uh, Bharata, Jada Bharata, and also about uh, Vratrasura. So we will be uh, hearing about these personalities today. And um, after hearing them, uh, Sadaka, uh, practicing devotee would feel like this is so awesome. This Atma Kandana Shuddha Bhakti Sharanagati is so awesome, so good. How can I get there? One would get that uh, desire uh, from within. So how to get there to that stage of Atma Kandana? That uh, we will discuss uh, at the end after hearing from these uh, uh, bhaktas, Shuddha bhaktas who had this Atma Kandana. Okay. So first we will hear about King Rishabhadeva. King Rishabhadeva, he was a plenary expansion of Lord Vishnu. And he taught not only to his children, but also to his citizens of uh, how a human form is meant just for Brahma Saukyam, pure devotional service. Not only he has set the goal and purpose of life, but he explained how to get there, how to get to that pure devotional service. He taught that Mahat Seva is the way to go. Yeah, so he says, Mahat Sevam Dwara Mahur Vimuktes, Tamo Dwaram Yoshitam Sangi Sangam, Mahantesta Samachittaha Prashanta, Vimanvayaha Suhurda Sada Oye. So King Rishabhadeva is saying, Mahat Sevam Dwara Mahur Vimuktes, when we do the Seva of Mahat, all these pure devotees, great devotees, Dwaram Ahur Vimuktes, the door for liberation opens. But if somebody does the Sangha of Yoshitam, Yoshitam is women, if somebody associates with women in a, uh, with a lusty intention, then that is the Mudwaram that will take them to the doors of ignorance, hell. He says that. So here he has given us the clue of how to get to the doors of liberation, which means how to perform pure devotional service. Because by performing pure devotional service, liberation is automatic. It is guaranteed anyway. How to perform that pure devotional service? By Mahat Seva. After saying that, he says, that's where our attachment should be. Our attachment should not be in a lustily way with the woman because that will lead one to the hell. After instructing that, he says, Mahantes tu samachittaha prashanta. Who are those Mahantas? Hmm? Who are those great souls? Whose chitta is sama? Who are steadily situated? Hmm? Prashanta, they are always peaceful. Viman Yavaha, um, they are devoid of any anger, Suhruda, they are friend, benefactor of everybody, Sadhavo, they have all the qualities of Sadhu, all the Sattvic qualities. So this is how the Mahantas are. This is how they are identified. And if one does the service of this Mahat Seva, of this uh, great devotees, then pure devotional service, can be performed, which automatically leads to liberation. So he instructs like that, King Vishwadeva. Yeah. And a uh, few of his uh, other instructions are, I've just taken uh, important, uh, very wonderful uh, instructions of uh, Rishwadeva. The first instruction, as we just discussed, is about how Mahaseva is the only way to perform pure devotional service. And in the next one, King Rishabhadeva instructs how it is very important to respect all because Krishna Adhishtana, um, Sarvabhutani, Riddeshe Tishtati Arjuna. That's what Lord Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita. So same thing here. Uh, King Rishabhadeva is saying that he can be respected. He's the expansion of the Lord. So he can be respected by respecting 
him that is present in all. That's his next instruction. He says, Sarvani Matishnataya Bhavatpis Charani Bhutani Sutta Druvani Sambhavityani Pade Padevo Vivita Dritis Tadu Harhanam Me. So he's saying, My dear sons, you shouldn't be envying any living entity, even they be moving or non moving. And you should know that I am seated in their heart. So you should offer respect to them, all of them, at all times. By doing so, you are offering respect to me. So that's another wonderful instruction English Vadeva gives. Also, he says how um, to perform devotional service. When the mind sight words, Mano Vatrik Karane Karane Hitasya. In the mind, sight, words, and all the knowledge gathering, working senses, uh, they are meant to be fully engaged in my service. Okay. So he's teaching the ways of devotion. King Vishwadeva was actually instructing all his sons, hundred sons, and these are few important instructions that we are hearing now. So Vina Pumamye Namaha Vimohat. Krutanta Pashana Vimokto Nishat. Unless these senses are engaged like this, a living entity cannot think of getting out of great entanglement of this material existence. So, in this way, King Vishabhadeva he gives instruction of uh, how to do the pure devotional service that is through Mahatseva and how everyone should be respected because the Lord is present in everyone one's heart, be they be moving or non-moving living entities, all of them should be respected at all times. And how all the uh, senses, the mind, word, deed, and body senses, everything should be engaged in the service. Otherwise, it is difficult to get out of this material entanglement. So these are the instructions of King Vishwadeva. So he has instructed like this to his citizens, to his sons. And then um, after ruling for a certain time, he gives the throne to uh, King Bharata. And then he goes to the forest to be fully absorbed uh, in the spiritual realm. So it is described in Srimad Bhagavatam how beautiful this uh, King Vishwadeva was uh, appearing. Uh, when he was just uh, absorbed uh, internally, internally in samadhi, in, in a spiritual absorption. So his face was uh, always decorated with a natural smile and he had reddish lotus eyes. And so the face had a smile and the eyes were reddish lotus. And his irises were very pleasing and removed the troubles of everyone. That is very significant. But this is like one of the characteristics of this Mahatma's elevated ones. Their presence itself can be so soothing to around and their drushti, their eyes, just their sight itself can be so pleasing that it removes the troubles of everyone. So that's how King Vishwadeva was. And uh, though he had the capability of exhibiting Siddhis, he did not entertain any of those Siddhis, uh, the perfections, mystic perfections. And uh, he also said, never trust the mind. It is restless, it can cheat us at any moment, and it's the root cause of all six enemies. These are few of his instructions. And he also said the devotees do not accept mukti. And bhakti is very rare when compared to liberation. All these are the teachings of uh, Rishabhadev. So that's what we discussed about how he was um, appearing so pleasing to the looks. And so presence, his presence, uh, and his sight itself 
were relieving the troubles. Yeah, we have dis discussed about that and about his instructions about the mind and how bhakti is um, rare when compared to liberation. So that's about King uh, uh, Rishabhadeva. Yeah, and now coming to King Bharata. King Bharata is uh, the oldest son of uh, uh, King Rishabhadeva. King Bharata was an exemplary Kshatriya. He did sacrifices as a Kshatriya, uh, as they were supposed to do, he did all the sacrifices, but not in a ritualistic way. He did the sacrifices with an understanding that he's pleasing the demigods because the demigods are limbs of Lord Vishnu, like that. So his sacrifices were dovetailed with the understanding that the demigods are the limbs of Lord Vishnu. Okay. And he did the yagnas for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu, not for his personal benefits. And he engaged all his citizens in their duties with great affection. So all these qualities, you now for somebody who has Atma Krandana, um, at least to some degree, they're naturally endowed with these qualities, uh, with, the, with this complete transcendental understanding of what they are performing. Like in this case of uh, uh, King Bharata, though he was externally performing all the Kshatriya responsibilities, he has an internal understanding of who he is doing to, that is to Lord Vishnu. And also the ruling he was doing as a Kshatriya was with great affection to the citizens. So it was not so much about self-centeredness and it was not so much about uh, uh, Kshatriya disconnected with the spirituality. Yeah. Uh, so uh, King Bharata um, did rule his uh, um, kingdom and all the citizens with great affection and his uh, uh, affection for Vasudeva Paramatma increased day by day. This was even when he was performing the duties of Kshatriya. And so it was in a latent stage, in the budding stage, his Atma Kandana, his uh, Shuddha Bhakti was in a budding stage. And then after ruling the kingdom, he went to Vanaprastha. He went to Pulaha Ashrama, to uh, Gandaki River. That's where Shalakram Shilas are available. And there he started his uh, bhakti yoga. He constantly meditated on the Lord's reddish lotus feet. And uh, because he was meditating on the auspicious, wonderful qualities of the Lord, his heart melted to a lake filled with water of ecstatic love. His head stood on end. And he lost attachment to all regulative duties. He even forgot the regulative services. And he was so advanced that he shunned ecstatic symptoms because he viewed them as obstacles for his service, for his continued worship to Narayana. So that was his advanced position. He got very much attached. And he was, he was very much absorbed in the guna of the Lord. Nama, rupa, guna of the Lord. That's why his heart was very soft and melted. And it says like it was like a lake filled with water of ecstatic clouds. So his heart was softened so much. And then at that stage, the very final stage of this power, King Bharata happened to care for a baby deer. And then the object of his worship, the object of his attachment started shifting. Until then, the object of attachment for Bharata was the Lord in the heart, Lord Vishnu. But now this has been slowly replaced by a mortal deer. So he started relishing happiness with the deer and he was in great agony when he did not see the deer. 
In this way, he slowly started neglecting the spiritual, the sadhana, mm -hmm. and got so much attached to this baby deer that all his thought throughout the day was filled about this baby deer. And that's how when he left the body, he ended up in a deer body. And in this dear body, he remembered everything about how he was a Bharata in the previous life, how his bhakti has gone to until the stage of bhava. And unfortunately, the uh, object of attachment has shifted from Narayana to, to this mortal dear. And he feels very regretted and he quits the dear body and gets the next body that is uh, a human body. That is the body of Jada Bharata. That body is me, Jada Bharata. That's the third life of the Bharata. It's called Jada because Bharata in this third life decided to be like a Jada, not entertaining anything material. Yeah. So this Jada Bharata, because he remembered what happened to his previous life, uh, uh, that he was a king and after that he turned into deer and in this life, in the human body again. In this life as Jada Bharata, he deliberately got detached from the very beginning, from anybody around, from all the family members. And he accepted all the mistreatment that was done to him with indifference, holding no resentment uh, on anybody. And he remained undisturbed in all calamities. Because he has gone to such a stage in his bhakti, in his previous lives. And he was very much determined to finish his business in this material world. Jada Bharata, he was very determined. So one day what happened is, a um, few decades were looking um, for an um, animal sacrifice. And then they found this Jada Bharata wandering around. So thinking him, him to be a mad man, um, these decoids bring, bring uh, Jada Bharata to in front of uh, Kalima to uh, give Jada Bharata as a sacrifice to goddess uh, Kali. So they were about to do that. And Jada Bharata did not uh, resist that at all. He was just absorbed in the meditation of the Lord. But Goddess Kali, she could not see that a pure devotee is um, being treated that way and was about to be beheaded. So she comes out, the, out of the deity and then she just kills all the decoits. Um, so Jada Bharata is not uh, afflicted at all, not hurt at all. So in this way, um, Mother Kali, Goddess Kali, did not let Jada Bharata uh, got hurt at all. She did, she saved Jada Bharata uh, from that animal sacrifice, from the human sacrifice. Why is it like that? Why did Goddess Kali protect Jada Bharata? Because his consci consciousness was Purna Vikasita Chaitana. Consciousness has different stages. Hmm? Avratta Chaitana, that is non-moving living entities, their consciousness is so, so covered. And then comes Sankuchita Chetana, the consciousness of the animals. And then comes Mukulita Chetana, that is consciousness, budding consciousness of human beings. But still, it is still budding only. It's not uh, uh, blossomed yet. The next stage of consciousness, blossoming consciousness, Vikasita Chaitana. And for somebody who is transcendentally enlightened, their consciousness is Purna Vikasita Chaitana. Jada Bharata has Purna Vikasita Chaitana. Fully blossomed consciousness, always absorbed in the meditation of the Lord. And he's not uh, worth of uh, killing the escape goat for a human sacrifice. That's why. Mother Kali did not let that happen. Also, because his consciousness is so blossomed, he didn't find duality at all. He was best friend of all. He didn't have matsara. 
He had no enemy. He has no enemy. No enemy and he didn't have any envy too. He was best friend of all. So because of these qualities, uh, Goddess Kali did not let Jadabharata uh, get hurt or killed. So in this way, Jadabharata was saved by Mother Kali. And after that, um, Jadabharata started wandering around. And at one time, uh, Rahugana, King Rahugana, um, was going through the forest and he was in need of a palanquin bearer. So Jadabharata was walking by and he was pulled in and forcibly asked to carry the palanquin. Yeah. And um, so what are the qualities of Jadabharata? So when he was called to pull the palanquin, um, Jadabharata did not resist. He came and started carrying the palanquin. And he wasn't doing it properly because he was not walking steadily because he didn't want to step on the ants on the ground and hurt them. That's why his gait was not steady. Walking was not proper. And King Rahuna, Rahuna got very angry. Yeah. Um, but after that, of course, Jarabharata enlightens Rahuna. But when we are focusing on the qualities of uh, uh, Jadabharata, his compassion was great. He was compassionate even to the ants. And he was compassionate to the ignorant people, to his family members. They were all ignorant of his saintly position, right? So he was compassionate to them too by arranging them for liberation. Uh, uh, actually, by uh, allowing them to see his form. They were passionate. Yeah, his family members were passionate. And how was he compassionate to them? By allowing them to see his form. And those decoits were in ignorance. He wanted to kill him uh, as a human sacrifice. How was he compassionate to them? He arranged for their liberation through Kalima, a goddess Kali. Yeah, And he was compassionate to uh, King Rahuguna, who was in more in the uh, mood of goodness. How was he compassionate? He gave jnana and bhakti to Rahugna. So in this way, Jadabharata, his presence itself was very compassionate, even to the people in ignorance, in passion, or in goodness, and even to the uh, 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 little living entities like ants. So that's the characteristic of Jadabharata. And uh, a few of his instructions are, Mind is the cause of bondage and liberation. Mind is the cause of all tribulations. So conquer it by neglect, attentiveness, and service to Guru and Krishna. So these are the instructions of Chadabharata. And uh, these are the two beautiful slokas uh, as a part of the instruction of Chadabharata to King Rahuguna. Rahugana eta tapasana yati, na chejaya nirva panad grahatva, na chandasa naiva jalat misure, vina mahat pada rajobi shakam. Vina mahat pada rajobi shakam, unless one smears the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee, Rahuganat, O King Rahugana. Not any kind of tapasa, not any kind of worship, not any kind of uh, perfect. Um, way of living over Nashrama and then taking the Vanaprastha and Sanyasa and not any kind of chandas or Vedic literature study and not any kind of austerity in getting in cold waters in winter and entering uh, into hot fire in, in summer. None of these austerities can uh, uh, help one realize the Lord, but only one thing can help realize the Lord, that is smearing the dust of the pure devotees. So that is the importance of the pure devotees, taking the instructions of the pure devotees into the heart. And uh, the other instruction of uh, uh, Jadabharata was, Yatra Uttama Shloka Gunanu Vada Prastuyate Gramya Kadha Vigataha Anudinam Matim Satim Yachati Vasudeve. 
wherever there is glorification of uttama sloka the lord devoid of any gramya kada materialistic topics nishivya mano anudinam mumuksha and when this is happening anudinam every day mumuksha are hearing from the liberated souls then matim satim yachati vasudevi this mati this consciousness this mind becomes satim pure yachati vasudevi desiring to serve the lotus feet of vasudeva so these are the beautiful instructions of uh, jada bharata and next coming to the other great personality vratrasura he is a hero real hero in the body of a demon because he chastised demons for fleeing away from war because of fear and also chastised demigods for killing the enemies when they're fleeing from the battle this is generally not a demonic character this is following the rules being very virtuous but this is being done by somebody who is in the demon body that's vritrasura he's a real hero and vritrasura he refrained attacking indra when he was unarmed and fell off of airavata he didn't attack him and vritrasura had great faith and respect to vajrayudha since it was empowered by lord vishnu so with all these qualities it is already clear that this is a saintly person present within this demonic body yeah so those are the uh, th- that's how uh, vritrasura is a real hero in the body of a demon and vritrasura is also a real devotee in the body of a demon how because he encouraged indra to give up fear fight and kill him so he can attain the dust of the lotus feet of the devotees and also he was looking forward to be freed of the rope of material attachment the gramya pasha and the world of material desires apavitta loka vratrasura said indra i will fix my mind upon the lotus feet of sankarshana and attain the destination of great sages like narada muni so please come kill me release me from this body these are all the words of a devotee it cannot be the words of a demon so that's why he is a real devotee in the body of a demon also he realized that the lord mercifully abstracts um the endeavors of three swarkika three swarkika and only unalloyed devotees of the lord gets this kind of mercy so this is because he was comparing how indra actually got stuck um, the opulences that was given but actually um, the actual mercy of the lord is when the lord abstracts the devotees pursues to uh, gain anything of this world so he did consider that kind of obstruction to gain anything material as the mercy of the lord so he is a real devotee in the body of a demon and there are four prayers that really reflect the yearning of ratrasara of how he is yearning for the lord in the heart will come to those prayers now this is a prayer it goes aham hare tava padaika mula dasanu daso bhavitasmi bhuya ha mana smarita supat mana smare asupatas punamste grinita va karma karoti kaya ha aham hare tava padaika mula dasanu daso bhavitamsi bhuya Oh Hari please I want to be when would I be the servant of your servants again who are seeking shelter at your lotus feet manas mareet asupata asupate gunamste grinita va karma karo dukhaya and may my mind smareet do the smarana of asupate gunamste the wonderful qualities of lord hari grinita va karma karo dukhaya grinita let me accept the words the deeds in order to please lord hari this is the yearning of ratrasara the next one is nanaka prashtam na cha parameshtyam na sarvabhaumam na narasadipatyam na yoga siddhir 
apunerbhavamva samanjasatva virahaya kanshe nanaka prashtam i don't want the dhruva loka nachapara meshtam i don't want the brahma loka na sarvabhomam i don't want the sovereignty over the earthly planets nar nara sadhipatyam i don't want the sovereignty in the lower planets na yoga siddhir i don't want the mystic powers apunar bhavam va i don't even want the liberation samanjasatva oh my lord who is the source of all opportunities virahaya kanshe if these things are separating me from your lotus feet i don't want any of this uh my lord i don't want any of this uh, i do not desire any of this if these are separating me from your lotus feet that's the yearning of rutrasra he doesn't want anything else but the lotus feet of lord hari the next one is this really speaks how he is really yearning for the lord in the heart longing this shloka goes like this ajata paksha iva matram khadha tanyam yadha vatsara kshudarta priyam priyeva vishitam visanna mano aravindaksham ditrikshate tvam ditrikshate tva ajata paksha iva mataram khaga like a little birds who din have fully grown wings as they are looking for their mother stanyam yatha vatsara kshudartha like a little calf uh, that is eagerly looking for mother's udders for milk priyam priyaiva vishitam vishanna vishitam vishanna like a uh, priya like a lover looking for the beloved who has been separated for a long time mano aravindaksha ditrikshate tvam i am looking for you like that my lord o aravindaksha o lotus eyed lord that's the calling out of the prasara to the lord in the heart the last one is mamuttam shloka janeshu sakyam samsara chakre bhramata svakarmi bhi tvanmayayatma tvanmaya tva tvanmaya atmatma jadara giheshu asakta chittasya nanada bhuyat here rutrasara is saying mama uttama shloka janeshu sakyam mama uttama shloka janeshu means devotees devotees the jana of uttama shloka devotees sakyam let me have the friendship of the devotees samsara chakre bramata svakarmi bhi because of my karma i am doing the bramata wandering in this samsara tvan maya because of your external chi atma atma jadara giheshu i am stuck with this um wife son and house all this paraphernalia asakta chittasya nanada bhuyat asakta chittasya let my chitta does not show any asakti to this material temporary things nanada bhuyat please let this not happen let this uh let my attachment be not gone to any of these material things hmm? but please give me the satyam of uttama shloka janeshu so that is the longing of ritrasara to the lord in the heart okay so these are the beautiful things of ritrasara this shows how much longing ritrasara had in his heart in his heart so these are the great souls and just to uh, briefly go over we talked the topic is about longing for the lord in the heart we talked about what atma krandana means that uninterrupted um a causeless um attraction of the soul to the super soul who has that all the shuddha bhaktas had have it and we just discussed about uh, rishabhadeva and jadavarata and vritrasara uh, we have heard about them and their longing for the heart and shri chaitanya mahaprabhu has beautifully put this in sri shikshashtaka this longing uh, from this shloka on the longing only deepens 
ಆಯೀನಂದ ತನುಜ ಕಿಂಕರ ಪದಿತಾಮ ವಿಷಮಿ ಭವಾಂಬುದ ಕೃಪಯಾ ತವ ಪಾದ ಪಂಕಜ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಧೂಲಿ ಸದೃಶಂ ವಿಚಿಂತಯ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಸಾಧಕಾಸ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಬೈ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಶುದ್ಧ ಭಕ್ತಾಸ್ ಹೂ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಸೊ from hearing from them hearing about them and living their life as per the instructions of the shuddha bhaktas under the guidance when we do this then slowly the sadhana bhakti gets ripened to raga bhakti and that's how now uh, we will receive that gift of atma kandana the way of yearning of the soul from the sh- shuddha bhaktas so i'm going to pause here thank you all so much for your attention and uh, so um vaishnava thakur ki jai our uh, pranams to all the shuddha bhaktas and to the lord in the heart shrimad bhagavatam ki jai hari krishna